Hey guys, doing another vlog for you. Today I want to talk about movie recommendations that uh, hopefully you guys haven't seen or you may have heard about but haven't seen. So I'm just going to jump right in, okay? First up we got A Mighty Wind. This is a mockumentary about several folk singers and bands from the 60s who are reunited for a benefit concert after the death of a famous benefactor in New York. Uh, it's directed by Christopher Guest who does a lot of improvisational um, mock documentary type movies, uh, a lot of quirky humor. It's definitely an acquired taste. Um, if you like very quirky, kind of silly, but very deadpan comedy, then I highly recommend it. Uh, second up, we got Halloween Town and Halloween Town 2. It's quite a stretch, right? Uh, two very classic Disney movies. There was a third, or, and I think a fourth one. Basically, fantasy story about a town where, you know, Halloween is the norm. It's skeletons and mummies and werewolves and vampires. Um, and it's about a young witch who, you know, through each movie kind of develops her witch powers and learns how to, you know, do the craft. Um, Debbie Reynolds plays uh, her grandmother, who is a also a witch, and she is the highlight of these movies, and I highly recommend them. Uh, they're a childhood favorite, and I've watched them recently, and they still hold up. Um, classic Disney Channel stuff for anyone who grew up in the 90s, or early 2000s. Uh, and you may have seen it, and if you have, then it's worth a rewatch. Highly recommend it. Third, we got Rushmore. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I love Wes Anderson. Um, again, quirky, deadpan, but also very serious. It's very sad. It's very emotional. Um, how can I describe this movie? The plot is basically about a 15-year-old boy named Max who is an overachiever and yet an underachiever. He's flunking out of a prestigious academy called Rushmore, which he is his life, you know. Um, he uh, forms a bunch of clubs and is a daydreamer who has grandiose visions for himself, but is ultimately a slacker when it comes to academics. He be befriends a famous uh, tycoon played by Bill Murray, and the two of them end up vying for the affections of an elementary school teacher who teaches at Rushmore. It sounds silly, but it's actually a very good movie. Much better than I could describe it. Uh, fourth, we got Better Off Dead. Uh, really funny, goofy 80s teen comedy. But not, like, goofy in a more realistic way, like what John Hughes was doing. More in its own oddball universe where uh, uh, drawings come to life and give, you know, romantic advice. Uh, <laughs> the best friend is a drug addict, but there's no actual drugs in the town, so he has to snort things like uh, Jello and the air from whipped cream cans. Uh, insane, zany, fun, really obscure movie, sadly, because I think it's one of the best of that kind of thing. And uh, I wanted to give that one a particular mention because it seems to get overlooked in favor of more John Hughes type there, like Pretty in Pink or The Breakfast Club. Definitely a good 80s teen comedy. Um, Definitely a lot more irreverent than what Hughes was doing. Okay, next up we got Oculus. For all you horror fans, Oculus is a great movie. An Overlook Gym, if, especially if you like psychological horror. It's actually one of the best horror movies I've seen. I can't recommend it highly enough. And it has... it. I don't know. To me it's original, but it may have already been done. But it has a very interesting original premise. And it's very non-linear. So you don't know what's going on exactly. You have ideas, and the movie itself has a very deceptive plot device with a mirror that shows what may or may not be there and how it gets into the characters' heads. Um, no spoilers, but things are not as what they seem, and I mean that in the best way possible, and they end up, and the payoff is definitely worth the wait. Oh God. So next up we have House. Um, this movie is really hard to describe. That's some interesting background. Uh, House is a 1977 Japanese horror comedy martial arts film. Uh, it is intentionally over the top. 
intentionally psychedelic, intentionally cheesy, uh, nightmarish in some of its imagery, and it combines playful, absurdist surrealism with dark, gruesome horror. Uh, the plot is basically a group of Japanese schoolgirls are trapped in this house of a witch and all hell breaks loose. Um, and there's everything from decapitated fingers playing pianos to uh, obviously animated cats <laughs> to all kinds of strange, strange visual effects. Uh, there's an interesting history behind the movie. The director's daughter, or the screenwriter's daughter, I forget which, uh, who was 10 at the time, had a lot of creative input because they wanted a more childlike view of uh, what these things would be like. Uh, I can only find it in the Criterion version, but it's Criterion, so you're getting your money's worth. Uh, a lot of good bonus features. Just a really weird-ass movie, but definitely worth watching. I love that cover art. Um, it's a movie so strange it makes the monkey's movie head look like Perry Mason. Just a heads up. Alright, moving on, we got Punch Drunk Love. Another strange, quirky comedy. I apparently unconsciously picked comedies, mostly. Um, it's directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, who, if anyone knows who that is, knows you're in for a good movie. It makes a very complex, um, unusual uh, movies, usually with interesting and unusual story structures. This one is a quirky comedy, a romantic comedy, following Adam Sandler playing against his usual shtick as a very neurotic guy who meets a woman and basically she helps him get his life in control. There's a lot of shenanigans, especially with the mattress salesman played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. But uh, the basics are it's Adam Sandler playing against type and an actually very well written and very interesting and creative romantic comedy. Okay, next up we got an animated film. Whisper of the Heart. Now I could have picked a I, you know, I could have picked an, uh, an Iyazaki movie or Ghost in the Shell or something for an anime film. But I picked Whisper of the Heart because it's it's a movie written uh, by Miyazaki, but not directed by him, and it has more of a focus on the everyday. It's not set in some fantastic world. It doesn't have interesting uh, biological and feminist themes. Well, it has feminist themes, but not overtly. Um, it's just basically about a girl discovering that she wants to be a writer and doing her best to achieve that goal while also navigating things like uh, having a crush and uh, school life and figuring out what she wants to do. Um, also, there's some great, great music in it. Um, it's a very slice of life, um, down to earth, just kind of real life, everyday story. But I mean that in a really good way. Um, there is a scene that is fantastical, but it's a dream sequence, so it's not like too out of character. Moving on, we got The Fugitive Kind. I decided to go with something classic. Fugitive Kind, Fugitive Kind, sorry. Uh, an Aaliyah Kazan film starring Marlon Brando. Um, anybody who likes classic cinema, especially classic dramas uh, from the 50s, would definitely enjoy it. Uh, anything Kazan directed is gold, and anything Marlon Brando in is obviously amazing because he was one of the best actors of the craft. All right, moving on. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we got Troll 2. Because why the hell not? Troll 2, very notorious. I don't need to go into detail. It's everything everyone says it is. It's awesome. It's amazing. Gloriously stupid, but in the best way possible. Um, though unintentionally so. Fraught with a lot of production details that make it very entertaining and also very uh, much a fiasco. And finally, going back into horror, we have The Exorcist. Now, everybody in the world has talked about this movie. I don't need to say any more about it. Just that I feel like more p younger people should see it because if you like horror and you're a young person and haven't seen it, then you are definitely in for a treat. It's definitely as scary as what people say it is, but not because of the special effects or even for the demon or whatever. 
it's scary for atmosphere. It's scary for how well written it is, and the character of Reagan is scary as hell. So, those are my recommendations. Uh, some of them are famous, some of them not so famous. But I kind of wanted just to give you guys an idea of some interesting stuff in case you were looking for something to watch. So, I hope you like my choices, and if not, I'm sorry. But I tried to be as eclectic as possible, so. Anyway, sorry to ramble on. I'll check you guys later. Bye.